في هذا اليوم المبارك مع محاضرين تعريفنا له تنكير له حقيقة رجل جزاه الله خير أبو أسامة الدكتور السادة الدكتور عبد الله القحطاني من القلائل الذين سخروا علمهم ووقتهم للدعوة والأعمال الخيرية في المنطقة له كثير من المشاركات الداخلية والخارجية والإعلامية والفضائية نحن يعني إن عرفنا بها فلن نصلها جميعا ولن نوفيه حقه في هذا الأمر لذلك لن نعرف نرحب به باسمكم ونسعد معه في هذا اللقاء ونسأل الله جل وعلا أن يتقبل منا ومن صالح الأعمال وأن يجزيه ويجزيكم خير الجزاء على هذا الاجتماع مقدما ومستمعين صلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد. Dear respected brothers and sisters, we are today with this episode Professor Abdullah Al-Qahtani. We are so happy to have him with us and we are lucky since we have in our area a person like him, we will not mention his participants in different fields in this area or in the media. We are very thankful for him to give us part of his time and his knowledge and we are very thankful for you to give us this opportunity to join us in this course. Thank you for all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It is misconceptions that are raised about Islam and Muslim issues as well. Uh, before I start, uh, I would like to ask a question. My you taken siesta, you know siesta? Siesta? Let me ask a question, if you don't mind. Okay? Who has passed through an experience where a misconception about Islam was raised to him? Uh, 
when I was in Russia, uh, I met uh, one uh, uh, in the university. He has a no religion. I spoke to him. I invited him to Islam, to go to Muslim. He told me, if I choose any religion, I leave all my work. He thinks that Islam, there is no work, there is nothing in life, only... Uh, Thank you. This is another misconception that Islam is the religion of workless, <laughs> jobless, whatever. Okay? Could you uh, pass the mic? Uh, I, I, I been asked, many, uh, many people ask me this question. Why Muslims married for women, for okay. wives? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Other, other misconceptions that they raised? Adel Akhwat Shay? Okay, so this is, I mean, obvious that whenever you call for any issue, you find people who are opposing it people who misunderstand what you're talking about, people have misconceptions about what you're discussing, which is expected. Let me ask you another question. Who has been involved in giving da'wah to non-Muslims? I know many people are very hesitant uh, to raise their hands. This is something which is very common. When you call people of other faiths that they're going to raise misconceptions about Islam. If you call them to anything, if you call people to anything, say, I want to open a private school, they will start bringing, you know, private schools, and that's good, you know. They just get the money and they just graduate the kids without taking care of them. This is what they do. Do all schools do the same thing? For these misconceptions are expected whenever you deal with any issue of people who have different interests, with people who have different interests or different perspective. So what do you mean by misconceptions? You know, misleading misconceptions, do you think they mean the same thing? It doesn't have to be about Islam, only. misconceptions means wrong ideas that we have about an issue, no matter what that issue is. When there are misconceptions about Islam mean wrong information about Islam, a misunderstanding of some Islamic concepts. So this is very clear in our minds. They are usually raised by non-Muslims. They are usually raised by non-Muslims for different reasons that we'll talk about some of these reasons. Let me ask another question. Let me ask another question. You think it's a good method to stand in front of people and say, today about, I want to talk about terrorism and its relationship to Islam. Why are you laughing? Between terrorism and Islam. You think it's a good idea to bring such topics? But what you're saying, and what he said, that some people raise misconception about Islam, they say it's a terrorist religion. And this happened to me. I had a group of Americans like two years back, and I sat with them. They're highly educated, all of them are engineers, holding very high positions in the military and the civil work. And I said to them, uh, let me ask you frankly, and I, want, I wish that you will answer frankly as well. I said, fine. I said, what do you think of Islam? What does it mean to you? What does Islam mean to you? What does Islam mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, peace. Uh, uh, anybody else? What does Islam mean to you, brothers in the back? Sisters, what does Islam mean to you? Way of life. All your life, okay. Submission to them. Do, do you think it means the same thing to everybody? Especially non-Muslims. And I thought they would 
He said, Islam means to me terrorism. I was not shocked. This is why when you go into the world of Dao, you're not shocked. You need to know. Just like a, a doctor, you know, a physician, when a patient tells you in his hand something, I mean, you take it easy. You take it easy. And you handle it in a very calm way, with understanding way. If you just jump onto people, you will not get a bad. But this is why I'm asking you a question. Is it? Will you tell me why you would bring this topic? Because it's existing. Many people, and I'm talking about millions of people, think Islam is the religion of terrorism. And all of you Muslims are terrorists. So is it good to bring this topic? If say well, I'm going to talk to a group of non-Muslims, and I speak to them about Islam and terrorism. I know there is no relationship between Islam and terrorism. I just want to explain to them. I think it's a good idea. No? Who thinks it's a good idea? I'm not going to translate it to English, so I'll say it in Arabic because I expect you to understand it. Okay? Rajal had a man, 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 a كاسترو وجماعة في أمريكا الجنوبية فالرجل هذا كان معارض بالأغاني حقته قوي عليهم تعرف جيش الناس فسجنوا شسوا سجنوا هذا يعرفها عبد الله اللي قلت له في القاعة فسجنوا الرجال طلعوا السجن يقولوا تبغى تغني قال لي والله أنا سنتين ثلاثة أنا ما غنيت كانت تسيبني بحالتي حالة قال تعال حطوه في مسرح ضخم جمعوا له لين ملا المسرح ده بقى قال الحين ايش؟ غنى 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 طاح وجاته سكته قلبي فاقول له ليه؟ ما حد فعل معليه صم صم كلهم جمعوا له الصم اللي في البلد كله فانتوا لا تجون عندي هنا صم يو جيت ذا مسج Somebody is laughing without knowing it. <laughs> you see other people laughing, you get to laugh. At least a smile. <laughs> okay? But um, uh, this is a joke. We just wanted to indicate sometimes if you want to, to uh, uh, penalize somebody, just like this from South Africa, South America, and uh, a singer. He was anti Marxism at one time, so the Marxists kept him in prison for a long time. Then they brought him later on and said, you want to sing? He said, yes, after all these years, I want to sing. And they brought him in a to a theater full of people. And he started singing until he fell down with a heart attack. You know what? All of them were deaf. They collected all the deaf people in town and probably the whole country. <laughs> this is why I wanted really to think sometimes. I could lecture for like two or three hours, but I want you to, to think with me now. Okay. We agree it's not a good idea to bring topics about misconceptions and talk to people. So, uh, the definition is there. So it refers to incorrect interpretation or understanding regarding a certain issue. A certain issue could throw it away in quotation. Islam, Muhammad, the Quran, uh, any issue okay, that you want to put there. And we agree that. Uh, Misconception issues are not good issues to bring as a topic of lecturing or talking. Okay? It's not usually. Some people will be attracted to it, but our aim is not only attracting people, but delivering the right message. The right message. The right message. And uh, we made a study uh, with a team of. Uh, regarding. In, uh, we we uh, interviewed many non Muslims who became Muslims, that's reverted to Islam. And we asked them, what is the most important, number one issue that attracted to Islam? What would you expect the answer is? Misconceptions? No. Good manners. Good manners that some Muslims are showing towards them. It's not misconception. You clarify many misconceptions by just dealing with people in the Islamic way. What else? Yes? Anybody?
So they attracted us. That is a matter of fact, they said the Quran. The Quran. These two issues are among the most important issues that attract people to Islam. The Quran and good practice, good manners. Okay, we deal with people in the Islamic way that is an issue. So we talk about anybody could stop at any moment if one to bring your own ideas. You may disagree with me. Uh, ask question, raise an issue. It agreed? Yes. Agreed? Yes. But when there is a history of misconceptions, some people think that misconceptions started with today's world. No. Long time ago. With all prophets. With all prophets since the time of no Hadis. But people raising this Conceptions, misconceptions. And there are many misconceptions that were raised during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Do you remember some of them? Some of the misconceptions that were raised during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Do you remember? That the Quran was copied from other books. And that he had a lady. You see? So they have raised this, say, oh, it was copied from Old Testament and New Testament. Eating. Just like what they say nowadays. See? So there were misconceptions like that. Anything else that you remember? Oh, this is raised by me. This is poetic text. This is against Prophet Muhammad Sallam. But the reality they realize later on that's not true. They, they just, and when we go and look at the sources of misconceptions, why these misconceptions? Nobody would say today that this is poetic kind of text. These misconceptions, some misconceptions that were raised during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's are not raised nowadays. Magic. Nobody would say that Quran is magic nowadays. You see? Why? Huh? Why nobody would bring this misconception that Quran is magic? Even if they know the language of Arabic. Oh. It is existing. Magic is existing today or not? They're existing. But why? No sensible person would raise the issue that Islam, that Quran, is magic. What well, if he knows Kalam Allah? He wouldn't do this. Why? See, how could it be one God? How could it be one? But let's this, this, this issue of magic because I'm giving you a good example of how. The, how to deal with misconceptions. It is highly, it's widespread everywhere in the world. Even, even in the United States, in England, everywhere, there is a lot of magic. Yes, it is widespread. <laughs> but what, how can we refute this? If somebody would say, this is the book of, this is magic, the Quran is, how can you deal with it? But, uh, misconceptions require a different way from production. See, it's easy to lecture. See, I will talk today about Islam. Islam is there are five pillars of Islam. Islam means this. There are six articles of faith. Islam is a It's easy. But when somebody raises a question like this, say, Quran is magic. Come on. Yeah. You see, as a sister, do you want to say something? I just saw the Bakr. Give the water come. وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر. How can this be magic? And anybody who believes in magic according to the Quran is kafir. You see? So within the Quran itself, a way to refute this matter it cannot be. It cannot be the book of magic. While saying whoever practices magic is, 
You see? For this is one way of dealing with misconceptions. Misconception, dealing with misconceptions requires creative thinking. Thinking in a different mood, in a different way, in a different, in a different way, in a different way. So this is, I'm just giving an example. These, uh, are, those are some of the people who were raising some misconceptions for a long time. Some of them continue today, some of them have already. They had a lot of see? So, what, if you talk about the Jews of Medina, there is many misconceptions, the Christians of Medina, and they came to the Prophet so they spent a lot of time until he reached the point, see, it's hard. No way. تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد فلما جمعة تطورتها يعني You've been raising many conceptions I've been responding to you and you're not really accepting this one وصل الله حقا تعالوا ندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نجعل لعنة الله ثم نبتهد فنجعل لعنة الله على كاذبين You see, sometimes People will keep misconceptions for the sake of misconceptions because they just wanted to find ways to prevent them from accepting the truth. And this is something that will look for the reasons of how misconceptions are raised. These are sources of misconception. I have a لا لا محتاج ما محتاج ما بغيت قدامك كل شيء أبغى نخش أبغى نخش أبغى أرقد أنا الحالي أوكي إذا في لوك على سورسز في كتبري مسكسبشنز أو إسلام أي أي لستد سام يمين ليس أجري ويل مي أو مي مي أجري ويل أد سام تينك أو تيك أوي سام وات دي تينك أوف ذيس هو كده يدين فور مي هي جست وان أوف ميس إنفورميشن وي أندرستاند وات يو مين باي إنفورميشن سام بدي إنفورم يو سام تينك رونج يو فاوند ام بانك ليت ريتيد باي a Jehovah Witness about Muhammad This is misinformation. Is that clear? Second? Oh, what do you think of this? You realize that we are a source of misconceptions? Yes. We are a very important source of misconceptions. As a matter of fact, most of misconceptions come out of us. I <laughs> made it. Okay. This is why we always blame the others. We have never blamed ourselves. If we change, the whole world will change. If we don't change, the whole world will not. This is basic. And I think this is one of the most dangerous source of misconceptions. Because they say, louders, Actions speak louder than words. Than words. They test me, Ahmad. I had the misconceptions about Muslims that they don't smile. They are always frowning. They are always angry. You go to Bar Zuma, they are just being sad. I'm not angry. Can you not smile? What can I say? Allah is Allah. Allah is Allah. He said, "I'm from the Asr. Ma raite ho illa." ما هو مبتسم متبسم بصيغة ايش؟ وهذا يعني I only see Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم smiling. We have taken the smile away from our faces. And you cannot give da'wah if you don't smile. خذها مني. Okay, you cannot give da'wah if without a smile. Okay? If you're happy with what you have, it should show on you. If it does not show on you, اقعد معه. I mean it, okay? And this is something very important, even when you discuss misconception. Your wife will run away from you, not other people. Your own children, you see? Yes, some of us are not here. Okay, behavior orientalists, what do you think? You know Orientalists? 
Good. Oriented. Oriented. What do you mean by oriented? Especially people who write about Islam, non Muslims who write about Islam and Islam issues. Do you know some of the names? Could you name some of the Orientalists who wrote badly about Islam? That's a lot. What have you had? Sharush. Sharush is a, is a priest, not only Orientalist. Okay? Amir Rehani. Samuel Huntington. Huh? Who else? Samuel, Samuel Hish. Zwimmer, Samuel Zwimmer. Okay. Uh, many people actually that like that. How many, you know, somebody who writes, who writes well about Islam? Muhammad Asad. Somebody who continued to be a Christian whenever he became Muslim. Muhammad Asad became Muslim. He was uh, actually one day the, uh, the ambassador of Pakistan to Muhammad Asad. مريم جميلة؟ أسمعك. Some Orientalists who wrote well about Islam. Some Orientalists means a non-Muslim writer who wrote about Islam, but he spoke well. Michael Hart, Thomas Carlyle, some of them. It's, it's sometimes important to know about those people and their writings. You know why? Somebody would say the Quran. Say, if I believed in the Quran, that's in the Word of God, I wouldn't really have argued with you. you see, if we say about, talk about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, see, if I believed that he's a prophet, I wouldn't have argued with you. But when you talk to somebody and you say, uh, who is in management, and you say, what do you think of leadership? Very important. You cannot really have run a very successful business or world or school, or whatever, without good leadership. Who do you think is the most, the greatest leader ever walked on earth? So you call. Maybe Jesus, maybe Abraham, maybe uh, Martin Luther King, maybe uh, uh, Ch Churchill, maybe uh, Lenin. Maybe. Huh? Shakespeare was not a leader. A man of literature. <laughs> okay? But if somebody like Michael Hart would say it's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the most influential person, person in the world, he listed 100 most influential people in the world, and he put Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on the top. He was attacked by fellow Americans. You see? Why would he select Muhammad? Because he loved him? He cared about him? He believed in him? No way. No way. But out of being objective researcher, and this really helps a lot in Tawa, helps a lot in Tawa, that we get informed about what other people say about Prophet Muhammad Sassam. Not everybody is saying negative things about Prophet Muhammad Sassam. There are many objective people in the world who are even among non Muslims. Just like during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sassam, there were some objective people who disagreed with Prophet Muhammad. But they never spoke bad about him. Uh, motivated journalists, they write about, uh, you know, some. Zuma was not a journalist. A journalist, I don't know. Especially Americans, 
Because most people in the world nowadays don't care about religion. When you talk about them, what do you say? I'm not interested. Why? Why many people in the world nowadays don't want to talk about religion, especially people with Christian background? Why? See? In some societies, it's a taboo. You know, taboo? Taboo. Something that you don't want to talk about. You hide it. Okay? Why? They get tired. They get tired. They, they need something, they practice something that's working against their own minds and hearts. A lot of contradictions. They don't feel the peace of mind. They don't understand what they're going through. So they get fed up with it. They say, I don't want to talk about religion anymore. Say, I don't want to talk with you about religion, religion either. I want you to look at your own way of life. But well, have Islam is not only a religion. It's not only a religion. The sister there and somebody here, but brother said it's a way of and this would really attract people to Islam. It's not something that you practice one day and you make yourself believe something that you don't believe in. No. It is something that runs in your veins, in your mind, in your heart, in your writing, in your talk, in your treatment of others, in your enjoyment of life. Does Islam encourage his enjoyment of life? I mean, yeah. I mean it's, it's, it's a religion of enjoyment. It's a religion of enjoyment in the right way. Many people don't know that about religion. And this is something that we've got to bring to people. Because people have this understanding about Islam that Muslims are not enjoying life. They're not enjoying life. Especially if they see you, if they see you frowning. Smile at I mean it. Nowadays they teach people, they train them how to smile. I'm not kidding. They train people how to smile. How to smile. They call us as a lamb. At the Bani Rabbi, for Ahsan at the end. At the Allah, I gave it to How he taught him how to smile. Atheist, or other, or like a you know, atheists. Well, I mean, people who don't believe in any religion, any God. And some from among the so called Muslims. Some called Muslims. They have Muslim names and they have nothing to do with, with any religion. With any. And those dealing with them is different. Dealing with them is, is different. In each category of those people, you need to deal with them differently. If you talk about misinformation, people who have misinformation about Islam, you're not going to quote some, something from the Bible and tell them, no, you have this in your Bible. Say, no. You just told me that this is not Islam. How? See? You told me that this is not Islam. I believe you. This is wrong information. واحد قال لك اسمي أنا إيش؟ محماس. اشترحك أنا. محماس. إيه اسمي محماس. قلت لا في اسمي ما هو اسمي محماس. اسمي إيش؟ عبد الله. I cleared out the misinformation that you had. I'm sorry. I know one person told me the name, and others are trying to hide the name. And I'm not even trying. I'm not even trying. But in fact, I wasn't motivated to do something bad to him. No. I was not ignorant. I was misinformed. Somebody told me that this brother's name is so and so, and I called him by that. It was not a bad name, but it's. They, they, mean, they, mean, they mean something else. Uh, for each category of those people may require a different approach. This is why 
this is a long, uh, 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 long story, a huge topic. But we just get informed. We get informed. Methods of refuting misconceptions. Methods of refuting misconceptions. How do we refute misconceptions? Okay. How do we refute misconceptions? How do we other other way? Sometimes uh, you show a good example to people, you clarify many misconceptions. I agree with you. And this is one of the greatest methods. And now I had uh, I went to England some time ago. For, and uh, I talked with a taxi driver about Muslims. They don't drink, they don't fornicate, they don't do these things. Don't speak about these issues. And then we're talking about how a policeman will stop you if you drive recklessly. You will drive recklessly. No, no, they don't believe in that. We have many Muslims. Then they test them. They someone have drunk, drunkness test. It's a good Anyway, this is an issue. Uh, my brother is right that we are raising many misconceptions ourselves that people see us and they develop these misconceptions, and a small misconception easily spreading. And just one incident that you do, you generalize. And it is very easy to generalize misconceptions. Even if they were like individual cases, they're very easy to generalize. And good individual cases are not usually generalized. Okay, they're not generalized. But how? Methods of dealing with misconceptions. There are many Muslims who make magic though. Yes. Okay. But it's refuted in the Quran. Somebody say, oh, because there are many Muslims who do magic, it must be part of their religion. I see. So how can you prove it? And I give you an example that you cannot curse yourself. I see. Second, incidents from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Or from the, the, his companions, Abdullah Masoud, he was traveling across the Ladi Shah, Salah al Fahd, Akhwan, Akhwan, and Yusuf, Salah al Fahd, and Kulah, and Yusuf, Salah al Sohm, and Yusuf, and Yusuf, and Yusuf, and Yusuf, and Salah al Kid, and Yusuf, 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 and that's monastery. This is monastery. So, so I thought. Okay, and there was a monk there. Okay, he talked, looked at those people. He said, "Do you have any among you from the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam?" Kaa Muhammad Abdullah sallallahu how how is this misconception? أنت في البيت صح ولا لا؟ هذا بطهم كلهم. وإذا والله شفت الرجال يجيبون أهل بعدين خلني إيش؟ سو دي بروت عبد الله. This is this is عبد الله بن سو. قال له. Oh, how come you claim that the people of Jannah don't go to the bathroom? Don't they eat, drink? Said this. Said how come? This is a misconception against the Hadith Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The people of Jannah don't go to the bathroom. Can you imagine any living being, any living being from the Amoeba to the largest creature in this universe, existing nowadays? 
that eat, drink, and don't go to the bathroom in different ways. You cannot imagine that. It is one feature of human beings, okay, of, of all uh, living beings, living beings. And so on, I should have done to show how are you going to say it? Until today, somebody can come in front of you saying, I say, hospital, come on here. Doctor, you claim, okay, come on, tell me. Fetus. This is what really happened. Abdullah Masur said, How about the fetus in the mother's womb? Said, yes, there is no nourishment. He said, Where does it go? Then he shot out. You see, because Abdullah Masur said, How about the Ashab Muhammad said, that man was really puzzled. But I don't know what I'm going to do. This monk was raising misconceptions about Islam, about Prophet Muhammad, about the Prophet. To hell you go. No, he would never say that. He said, I'm going to go to the hospital. How come you say goodbye? To this monk who has been raising misconceptions about Islam. He said, didn't you hear the words of Allah? وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Say that which is good for all people. Isn't he nas? Ala nas? Ala bila? Great. Ala khalas. Mishukul. Al-hayqan al-sab al-khalqul. Sayyirah. Those who don't go in your way, you just curse them. This is not the practice of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Even Allah warned us against that. When I took the lead in the owner in doing that, for you took Allah at one very end. Don't curse the idols that they make beside Allah as well. They will start cursing Allah without knowledge. We're not the people who say bad things. It's not our business. This thing is the commodity of the Creator, not ours. We only work for it. We're paid to do it one way or another. So we should do it according to that of the Creator, the one who sent us to this work. My Ikhwan, Ikhwat, waking up. Salah al-Nabi. Allahumma salli ala Rasulullah. Zidu ya Ikhwan, liyum, liyum, fadl al-Azim, salah ala Rasulullah, salah ala Rasulullah. So we talked about methods of religion, scholars, discussion, and gave you Abdullah and Masood's method. Sacred writings of different groups. This is a long issue. Well, I tried to avoid this for a long time. I started doing it for some time, but I felt it's not always refuting because people uh, will, will, will shrink to their own, what they call it, comfort zone. Okay? When you give them the space for discussion, they will bring in certain issues. When you hit them, the banging on the head, this is what I believe from my own short experience, that this is one source. This is one source. Because sometimes, and especially, I think this is, could work with those people who are very devout adherents to these religions. But then one will look, why are you kiss the ground? Why are you? you kiss the ground. You, kiss the, you could kiss the walls instead. They make fun of you. And you could take it easy. You see, Allah asked me to do this. And you know, sujood is the, the most uh, humiliating uh, position that you do. You only do it to Allah, you don't do it to any human being, etc. Say, Yes, 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 and usually those among the priests and the nuns. Do you believe in this book? In the Testament? Yes. This is what Jesus did. He kissed the ground. He never kissed the ground. You see, 
let's kiss the ground together. If Jesus is kissing the ground, if Moses is kissing the ground, if Abraham is kissing the ground, why not kissing it? Eh? Then you tell them, this is not kissing the ground. It is worshiping Allah in the best way, in the best manner, just like all prophets. But this is in the Old Testament. So yes, it is in the Old Testament. Did I joke about the priest or whatever? for now. Because they don't read the Bible. They don't read it. But had I remember a Filipino who became Muslim a long time ago, said Abdullah, the best way to invite Christians is, is to ask them to read the Bible. <laughs> to read the Bible. But sometimes you need to go to Old Testament, New Testament. Do you have Old Testament, Shia? Torah, okay, so one of the in Arabic. Okay, these are the books that were revealed to Moses and before, according to them. We know that there is a lot of change that has been taking place. And we don't say it, they, the Christians, say it. And the vast majority of Christians don't believe that the, the book that we have called the Bible, the Holy Bible, is the word of Allah. It may contain some of the words of Allah, but it's not the word, even the word of Jesus. Okay, there is a lot of research that indicates that. منها بحث عملته أختنا رحمة الله عليها وسكنا سيدة الجنات الدكتور عزيز الله في كتابة منهجية جمع السنة وجمع الأناجيل. Okay, and she made a comparison between the methodology of collecting the hadith Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and collecting the saying of Jesus Christ peace be upon him. And all the sayings reported to Jesus صلى الله عليه وسلم considered to be hadith. Mullah rejected hadith if the principles of hadith were applied on them. For Talmud, New Testament, are they someone a gospel? Okay. Uh, there is something I want you to know. Okay. Uh, the veil that the Holy Prophet is wearing right now, one of the books that the Hindus, Vedas, okay, well, so sometimes in these sacred books, you could find a lot to refute what they say from their own books, from their own books. And the vast majority of the adherents of most religions of the world nowadays, including Muslims, know a little about their books, sacred books. And I'm not an exception to all. Okay, like in Logic, sometimes. Logic, how do you say that? ولهذا يقول لكم الحديث قال الله احنا جينا كذا الله عز وجل يقول ام خلقوا من غير شيء؟ طيب يعلمون انتم جيتوا من لا شيء فعلمني ولا انت ايش؟ ولهذا طلع الدارويين مثيري تو فايند سولوشن تو ذس لوجيكال بروبلم ذات ذي وينت ثرو مستحيل تكون خلقت من لا شيء او اني خلقت اذا خلقت نفسك تقدر تخلق نفسك ايش؟ يلا خلق عظمه اوكي جو هيد فذس لوجيكال فورملا كونفيوزد ان الله عز وجل يخاطب ايضا في القران في نوع من المخاطبه ولا ليش؟ طيب خاطب ام خلقوا من غير شيء ام ام خلقوا السماوات والارض شيء بعدها ايش؟ تحدي كبير فيقول لك انت خلقت عمرك ولا جيت من لا شيء قال لا ابوهم ايش؟ قد طلعوا بالفكره الايش؟ داروين ثيري و... يعني كلام فاضي اتس بين ريجكتد كومبليتلي it's been rejected. Even they warn against teaching it now for children in schools because it affected their mentality. They think they're animals. So I should act like animals. If his grandfather was an ape, he would act like an ape. And this is why we shouldn't be confused. He thinks that his grandfather was an ape and his grandmother was a she-ape. So <laughs> why not they would behave like apes? No, alhamdulillah, we are human beings. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَيَّا We have elevated the sons of Adam. We are the sons of Adam, we are not the sons of apes. You see? But this is something that sometimes with scientific findings, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, every day we discover things that we as Muslims shouldn't be looking forward to that for ourselves. لكن الله عز وجل يزداد بإيمان على مع مع إيمان يزداد بإيمان مع إيمانه صحيح ترى أني أخبت في الله تعالى now, commissions, institutions, organizations working for this. Well, I'll just give an example. Keith Moore, 
حد في المدرسه هنا هون كي انتبهوا يا شباب. عندك طبيب؟ في حد من الطب هنا يا شباب؟ ما في حد؟ رفع يدك يا اخي. اوكي؟ امبريولوجيست. يو سي يو هيم. ذي ون نون امبريولوجيست. وورلد رينون امبريولوجيست. هي اتندد ون اوف ذا كونفرنس ان لونج تايم اباوت ذا ميريكلز اوف قران والسنه. And he learned about the development of the fetus embryo, okay, in the embryo. Uh, and he has a very well-known book called "The Developing Human." The developing human, how the human being develops. And he had uh, this is found I mean, even in uh, YouTube. You find it if you write Keith Moore, you find it. And they interviewed him when he went back to Canada and said, How come you say it is impossible to see the embryo at a certain age? And you know, you say that Muhammad spoke about that, when Allah spoke about that, and the Prophet spoke about that in the hadith, okay? And spoke about the embryo. Don't you think that Muhammad, those savage people, terrorists, they will just cut women's abdomen and just look inside, and they will just, they will describe it. He started laughing. An old man started laughing. He couldn't stop laughing. The announcer was really <laughs> ashamed of himself. Why this man was laughing? And that man could not. You know why he was laughing? Why was he laughing so much? Yes, he's a scientist, but why was he, he, he was laughing when he said that Muhammad or some of those savage Arabs, they cut women's abdomen. Okay? And they got this and they started describing what's going on there. That's true. Until nowadays, it's very hard to see at certain age. Unless you have very sophisticated microscopes, you cannot see it. So how, even if you cut 1,000 women, you will not see anything. Okay? You will not see anything. It has to be taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, you have that technique. Some of the scientists really do a lot of work like this. Gary Miller, you know Gary Miller? Johnny Hanke, that was a man. Okay? Gary Miller is one of the most, uh, very well known in mathematics. And when they asked him why, he wrote his book, The Amazing Quran. The Amazing Quran. They asked him, why did you become Muslim, Gary? He used to be a professor, he's a professor of mathematics, a Canadian, and he taught at King uh, Fahd, at the petroleum, petroleum of minerals, for some time, and he came to Abha once, okay? Uh, he was married to a woman from Abha, for some time, okay? Then they separated. Anyway, for logic, he said, Surat al-Masad, tabbat yada ilaha al-Mata, ma abda anhu ma yubu wa ma kasad. How could it be? Lahtul al-Alam adhul ki fakroon, hadha al-Alam riyadiyat. He works with logic a lot. Which is the most so hard to get out of this book? Come, come on now. Huh? You have to ask me another one. This is not a test. This is not a test. Tabbat yada abi lahabi wa tabbat. لو قال أبو لهب عمر صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن الله طلع محمد كذاب ولا لا؟ اللهم صل على محمد إن كان بس يقول لك لا يقول لك إذا أبو لهب ود سي أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وقال محمد إذا مسجد الفضل خلاص يبقى بدي سي يو آر لاي سي يقول سبحان الله يقول هي ستارتد ستادي بيكوز دوز بيبول لوك أت القرآن نوت سوبرفيشيالي بي جو ديب إنتو إت بي أندرستاند ذا سيتويشن ذا كونتكست أوف القرآن كم منا يحفظ كتاب الله عز وجل؟ كم منا يفهمه؟ You see? And this is again a statistician of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions. Anyway, but he said because of this surah I became logically speaking, he said I and Tahab. لو قلت لكم سعيد ما هو موجود هنا واتحدى هنا ولا يمكن يكون هنا واحد عرف سعيد قال لك شو موجود؟ You're not going to believe me anymore. You're not going to believe me. Evidence from people's way of life. This is uh, who could give an example how we could refute some issues from people's way of life, from what's going on, opinions, whatever. Something that is really, I mean, you you feel in the society. 
you see it. It has been practiced and found that it is working. It is working. Now, I'm going to say, say, okay, all I have to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going Experience by experience, you take people's way of life into consideration. And some, sometimes this is very effective, especially with our materialistic world nowadays. With our materialistic world, evidence from people's way of life. Can you give an example? We had a friend who came to, to a friend. Anyway, somebody came from a uh, European country to teach at our university. He said, I don't know, how can you live without drinking wine? And he said, I'm not kidding. Without drinking wine. It's good for you, but not. I don't believe in that. Okay, can I ask you a question? How are you going to deal with them? So, <coughs> this is another question. Are you really happy when you drink wine? What are the social consequences of drinking wine? What are the health consequences of drinking wine? You, you will tell you, say, I am a moderate person. <laughs> I'm a moderate. Let's go to statistics. How many moderate drinkers have become obesive, have become alcoholic? How many? How many people are killed because of alcohol? See? How many crimes have been taking place in the world? But this is why in the West they say they bring these to my you know, oil companies, small company, tobacco companies are very influential, they influence politics in the world. They influence, they influence decisions that are taken by big countries. Okay, because they have billions and billions. Samsung. Samsung. Oh, 
small boy. The other motivating to ask question is that <laughs> you then could only even open this up. I get your question. Actually, this question was asked, I was addressed this question one time ago, say, how are we going to respond to when Muslims we say, hey, you are Muslims having sex. Look at the Shias and the Sunnis and whatever. Who is holding the truth? Who is holding the truth? Come on, this is one of the most difficult questions to have. I agree with you. Not everybody will be convinced. Not everybody will be convinced. First time they see those people getting there. And it has been one spreading everywhere nowadays. In the past, I saw it in Discovery Channel in 1992. Nowadays, you see it in every channel. <laughs> and I remember, and I was really amazed when I saw it in Discovery Channel a long time ago, 1992. Okay? I was really astonished. I asked somebody recently this question. I think he was a Christian. He said, and I, and sometimes you ask the people, you say, well, I don't know how to ask, answer the question. I want you to help me with it. You see, they will start. And he started thinking, say, listen, Abdullah. I said, what? He said, you're a linguist. I said, yes, I'm a linguist. He said, do linguists, all linguists agree in one theory? I said, no, they fight over theories. يعني من الطلاب الكسائي والسيبوي كانوا يأخذون ليش؟ يحبهم بعض رحمة الله عليهم جميعا تعرفون الكسائي؟ سيبوي؟ مدرسة البصرة مدرسة إيش؟ كوفا سكول أو البصرة سكول They were two schools of linguistics major schools of and they have dispute said people have to be like that who is holding the truth you could find out your self find out which theory you want to follow he said, even every religion, and you in Islam, you have very few sects, big sects. But look at in Christianity. This is what he's saying. We have Catholics, Protestants, Baptists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Evangelists. Name it, born again. Every day you get a new big sect, and they fight with each others. They fight with each others. Then they started thinking, subhanAllah. But they fight with each other. Do they, do they have one source through which they can measure their own defense? No. Do we have? This is a big difference. This is a big difference between the sects that exist in Islam and the sects that exist in other religions. Of course, the difference people, difference among people is part of our built up as a as a builder, as human beings, as, as human beings, as human beings. And this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of those people who are going to find the right way or go to the wrong way. If I get this answer from this man, and I was really thinking, well, it is a political division, which is, it started based on politics, it has nothing to do with religion. And al Hussein, radiallahu anhu, Ali ibn Abi Talib, all those people were taken as scapegoats through which a whole religion was built, a whole new religion was built, that is basically politics, that's basically about politics. But not everybody would be convinced by that, not everybody would be convinced by that. But we, we realize that there is difference. But we have a reference that we could judge our behavior, our actions, our beliefs based upon. And each party says he adheres to it, at least in public, that they adhere to it. So this is one of the ways. Inshallah, Abu Hassan Abu Ali, by the Hassan Ali, inshallah, Abu Mishkalat. Ma'ad Abu Mishkalat. Amir Ahmed. Billah. Any other question that you have? Oh. Well, I'm not listening. What do you mean? 
الله يحفظ منى يحفظك يا اسماعيل يحفظ يسعد يسعد المسلمين مي الله يورد يو منى از ا تيشر ذس فيلد هيز كامينج تو ديت تو ليرن الله المستعان ام نوت ذا وان تو تيتش منى والله ام نوت ذا وان فجزاك الله خير اوكي سو ار شو ذا I'll give you this if you want, Sister Mona. This slide. Okay. Or the one before it. I'll do that while you have other questions. But if you don't want people to ask questions, ask them to ask questions. This is why uh, I intimidated my dear brother, my Allah, your brother Hassan, with the Sheikh Akid and Boy. So this is one way to attract. Questions. <laughs> you say, oh, you, you don't understand what's, what's going on. This is why you don't ask questions. No, no. No. Okay. Good. So we'll, we'll move ahead. Again, I tell you On some of these misconceptions that major misconceptions, I try to make a list. And some of these misconceptions really uh, change over time. Change over time. One misconception conception was there a long time ago. Nowadays, it does not yet exist. 